I need that. Oh, okay. This is part of the video, buddy. What are you doing? Oh, man. All right, we ready? Mm -hmm. All right, today I'm gonna go a little more in depth on how to clean a sponge filter. Now we've got an old video that I did on a whim that has done crazy well. And at the time, I didn't put all my thought into it. So now I can kind of go a little more in depth. So what we're talking about here is sponge filters like in this tank or sponge filters on a hang on back, either one of those. Basically, they're there to collect debris. And right now on our sponge filter, we see we have debris. Now we're running a coarse sponge filter, which I prefer. It means it can go longer without being cleaned, right? It can also hold more. Someone on the internet I'm sure is fighting me on that right now, but in general, these never get clogged where a fine one can get clogged. I wanna show you, so like these ones aren't that dirty. They visually look dirty, but when one's getting pretty full, if we go over to this goldfish tank right over here, you'll see one that's really full. This one in the light, you can see there's lots of debris back in the sponge. That's a perfect candidate to clean. Now, uh, I cleaned this one a week ago, and these goldfish, you can check out a different video, but they've been doing lots of cleaning, and basically, sponge filters work like it's a vacuum. So they're just gonna keep sucking up all the debris, and that's what we want it to do. So then, we have to empty the vacuum. That's what's going on here today. If I reach in there, and I just grab it, it's gonna release it all, right? It's kind of like why you don't empty your vacuum like in your kitchen, because you're pouring it out and the dust goes everywhere. You try to do it outside. So what I like to do is I like to use a bag. Now this is a Ziploc bag. You can use fish bags if you got a decent sized fish bag that you got from the fish store. And you have to replace these fairly often because what you're gonna find is you're gonna hit the sides when you take it off and all of that and it's gonna get holes. And once this has a, a hole in it, it's like a little fountain and it's gonna get everything wet if it's in your living room and that kind of stuff. So I just use a gallon bag most times. And the goal is we're gonna, as gently as we can, get this underneath the sponge and lift it up out. So anything that falls off is gonna be in this bag. We're gonna take that all the way out. So I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. Go up to the top here. First thing I do is I actually fill the bag. I'm going to take off my little Apple watch. So then I make sure and you get it down low and I'm trying to do it with one hand so it's more visible. So it's not this clumsy normally, but now I'm only trying to do, I'm going to have to do two hands. All right. So I basically hold it open. Hopefully you can still see. I'm with my other hand. I'm going to grab the top and gently move this and the minimum stuff's going to come off possible. And then we're going to lift it out. So Right now it's looking pretty clean. So now I'm gonna remove the top and that's where it's gonna start getting gunky. So I've now removed the top. Whatever you do now, this is very important. Do not pour this water back in. Like this is a little bit too filled on this bag so I might get a little water coming out but the goal is to not let any of that water back in, pull it out and over. So now I've got a bucket. I use a trash can, you might use a bucket. You can pour some of this water out now. Now the goal is get the center out of it. Now this is still pretty dirty. Like look how much gunk is actually in the inside of this. That was gross. That's fish poop. So we actually might rinse this. See all the debris floating around in there, right? So the first thing you want to do is get your first pass of squeezing. And you're just doing this move. You can get it against the side if you want, and you can kind of compress it all the way, but it doesn't really matter with the first pass. If you have a fine sponge, you might do this move where you go, Hwah! and then you let up and it doesn't come back because it's so clogged. Now you can see, I've got fish poop all over my hands. It's gross. I kind of do this move where I get water out. You can still see brown fish poop in here. This is not done. So many people then go, ah, let's put this back in. Terrible idea, don't do that. You're gonna pour this water out. That was my airstone. We'll put that <laughs> back in at the end. So now you've got a bag like this. Now you just go and you grab a little more water and you just keep letting it in. Don't fill it up all the way because we don't want to spill it on the way out again. So you can see how much more is already coming off this thing, right? There's still a lot in there. If we'd put that in after one squeezing, We'd be sad. Now you're never gonna get this 100% clean, but you can get fairly close. 
Usually I find it takes three, maybe four bags of water. So that's another bag of brown water. Now, if we look at it this time, a lot less brown left on the sponge. One thing I will point out here, right here, I have a Malaysian trumpet snail. If you have tons of Malaysian trumpet snails and they're living in your sponge, like here's another one, if they're bigger, sometimes you get stabbed by a Malaysian trumpet snail as you're doing this, so be careful. So this is still not done. We're gonna go back. I, I like to get clean water coming out of the Ziploc bag. If we are getting that, then we know it's actually clean. So this time, not so bad. Still stuff coming off though. So now you're seeing kind of how it's done because the water's not so brown. This is usually the point where you're not gonna get too much cleaner. You could spend another hour doing it, but you're not gonna get too much cleaner than this. You can, you know, almost see through it. Now, I personally have to go rescue my airstone. There we go. So I've got my airstone. I give it a little visual inspection. Now, this is what I do. Maybe not everyone does this. I take it apart a little bit and just uh, kind of squeeze and make sure, you know, if you squeeze it down real tight, sometimes you can get a little bit of the gunk to come out. But then I loosen it back up and I just give it a visual inspection, so we're good. If you want, you can clean your intake tube. I usually never do, but it's got hard algae in there. You have to scrape it off, and it's a lot of work, and it just grows back. That's why we made our tube green, because it hides more of it. So that's now hooked back up. We're going to put our uh, air stone at the bottom of the bullseye so we get the bubbles we want. You can see now it's making bubbles. We're gonna put that on the top of this thing. And now you can see a little bit of stuff sloughing off, a little bit. That is common. It's gonna pick it back up. So it's kind of imagine, imagine you've cleaned your entire house, you vacuumed it all, and you did empty the bag in your kitchen. The little bit of dust that lands on the floor, you just vacuum up again, and you still cleaned your house a ton. Now I wanna show you what it's like when you don't do it right. So now if I just go and grab this one without using a bag, like so many people do unfortunately, and you're grabbing it, like look how much has already come off. Now I haven't even lifted it out of the water yet. See all the stuff dumping in? That's how much floaty, I'm gonna take it out right now just so that way we don't contaminate the experiment here. So now you can see all of this debris in here this side's still clean, right? We did that side. This all sloughed off, and now, you know, we could have taken that out with it. So the other thing I'm gonna to touch on here, can you clean this at a sink? Yes and no. I have very little amounts of chlorine. If you have water that's not way too hot, usually you can get away with it. Also, I have two sponge filters here. Normally, you might do one, then next week do the other, and that's a way better way to make sure you don't disrupt your bacteria colony. But yes, you could take this over to your sink, and you could for sure clean the inside. And my temperature is always 78 degrees, because that's just the way my fish room is set. This doesn't go hot, so I'm always at 78, right? So we're cleaning it. All of this water is brand new water. Right? And if I care about the environment, which I do, and hopefully you do too, if we were taking water out of our aquarium with the Ziploc bag, right? If we're doing that, we're now doing a water change. Then the water we're gonna refill back into the aquarium is nice clean water. So we're getting our water change done and getting our sponge clean. It's still gonna slough some off though when you put it back in, it always does. But I've wasted, well, all of that water is kind of wastewater compared to taking out of the aquarium. I consider aquarium water to be used once. I'm recycling it to clean, put in fresh. This is fresh and I'm just losing it down the drain. So uh, the other tip that I'll give you is if you were starting a brand new tank, remember all that brown poopy water we've been making? I will pour that straight into an aquarium to jumpstart it because that's going to be full of, well I shouldn't say full because it's gonna have some, a little bit of bacteria, a little bit of microorganisms and things like that. It'll take an aquarium that's very sterile to not sterile. Doesn't mean it's fully cycled or anything like that. I don't want to, you know, convey that. 
put it back in and we can put it back in our aquarium. You can now see there's floaties everywhere and that's just what you're trying to avoid. Usually when you're trying to clean an aquarium, you go, hey, it needs to look cleaner. And this water right now looks dirtier than when we started. Now also know that my water level is low, so I'm gonna fill this back up. So the water I put down the drain would have gone into here and it's just more efficient. Now that really matters when you work at a fish store or when you have a ton of aquariums. Efficiency is key. So a lot of times what I would do is I would be cleaning the sponge filters, turn the water hose on, clean the next one. And then by the time that one's cleaned, I move the hose over. And then, because I always like to recycle water, this water that is in here is the best water you can possibly get to water house plants or, how, or plants outside, either one. So use it again on your favorite indoor spider plant or you know, peace lily, whatever you got or go water your favorite tree or something outside. And so this is very nutrient rich water. People sell this all the time as composting tea or fish emulsion fertilizers, all of that, that you're paying money for, we're pouring down the drain typically, if I just pour that down the drain over there. So if everyone was to kind of do that, I think we would use a lot less water as a society and we'd have cleaner aquariums, not like this, if we do it the right way. So. That's, my, that's how I clean sponge filters and how I recommend everyone to do it. It's how we train our employees to do it. And if you've been doing it the other way, give this a try and just see how much more efficient it would be for you because I think you'll love it.